just to let you know who I am, I started a web design company in 1995. Back then there was no school where you could go to to learn about this. I just had to figure out the programming. I got that part down, uh, realized I'm not a designer, had to hire designers. Designers back then were making brochures, catalogs, magazine ads. They didn't know a thing about what I needed to make a web website. So I had to teach the designer everything about what I needed. Um, then, by 2003, I changed the company name, turned it into a full-service ad agency because I was doing so many other things for a lot of people. They wanted brochures and trade show displays, so we became a full-service ad agency in 2003. And um, at the end of this seminar, you won't, you won't need to take notes. I'm going to give you this presentation, and we're recording, so you'll get a link to the video and the presentation, so you don't need to be secretaries today. Just Pay attention and you'll get the whole thing. You can watch me all over again as often as you like. Um, also, anyone in the room that does social media marketing for a living? Okay, great. <laughs> so that's good to know and uh, it's good that you're here. I'm glad you're here and when you're having a seminar, I'm going to go to that one too because there's never a time when we know everything there is to know. If I thought I knew everything, I would have quit learning long ago, and our seminar would be about MySpace today, right? Because it's changed a lot since then. Remember Friendster? That's, I don't even know if that exists. Um, and if you do have questions at any time, just let me know, uh, and we'll go over them, or we can wait until the end, whatever you prefer. And now, what happened? I think my... Batteries are giving me trouble. Okay, so what's the social media goal? We always have to have a goal or we don't know what we're doing or why we're doing it. So for everything we do with social media, we need to think about what we're trying to accomplish. What is our goal? So here's just some possible goals. Like, could be to get new customers. And maybe you think, well, that's obvious. Isn't that the only reason you do social media? No, not obvious. Take, for example, if I was a dentist. I've only got so many hours in a day, and if I'm the only dentist in the shop, there's only so many patients I can see, I may have my limit of patients. So getting new customers may not be why I want to be on social media. Maybe I just want to be on social media so you don't think I'm old and not keeping up with the times and maybe using old technology and dentistry too. So for that reason alone, I might want to be on social media just to look like I'm keeping up with the times. But it could be also customer retention. Like I said, if I'm that dentist, maybe I'm retiring in 10 years, I just want to keep the ones I've got. I'm not looking for new ones, so I'll keep in touch with them on social media. Maybe we want to promote new products, new services, or keep in touch with customers, or my favorite reason, the reason I'm usually using social media is to get better rankings in Google. And we do that, here's an example. Uh, if you search for private school Miami Beach or Montessori school Miami Beach, that first one that I circled, you see it says ad. They're paying to be ahead of my client, Le Petit, who is not paying. So, well, we just handle their social media for them, but they're not buying ads in Google. They don't need to. So it's because of what we're doing in social media. And we built their website. So if you build the website properly and you use social media, it ranks better. When we post things on social media and other people like them or follow us or share it, that creates a social signal. So Google detects these social signals. So we want to have a lot of social signals so our websites rank higher. Here's another one, Jewelry Miami. And you see that with, when you search Jewelry Miami, you don't find every kiss begins with K, and you don't find he went to Jared. You find my client, Richard's Gems and Jewelry, with only one showing up ahead of him. Miami's a big city. There's a lot of jewelers. You look for Car Repair Hollywood, there's my client right at the t uh, top of the list in the map section, which is really useful. And if you look for full service ad agency, and this time I went South Florida, much bigger area. One, two, three, four are paying to be ahead of me. This one's not paying to be ahead of me. You should call him, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm number two. That's not bad, and if I would have put Hollywood, I'd probably be number one. So again, I'm just using social media to get the website to rank better. That's my goal, and usually my goal for my clients. What did I do? Okay, so. Which social media is best for your business? Uh, it's going to go back to the goal, who, who you're trying to reach, what you're trying to accomplish. And there's just a few logos. There's plenty of others. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. Now, here's some info from three years ago. Three years ago, and, I, and I'm going to go to modern day too, but three years ago, 
88% of 18 to 29 year olds were on Facebook. So if you want to reach young people, that's it, Facebook. But you know what? Even if we look at 65 year olds, 62% of all the senior citizens were on Facebook. So pretty much whoever you wanted to reach three years ago, Facebook, that was the answer. And we're not looking at gender or education or uh, anything about income. If we just think about the age, all ages were on Facebook three years ago. If we look at Instagram, not so many seniors, only 8% of seniors. So it's safe to say three years ago, senior citizens just really weren't using Instagram. It wasn't their thing. But you could find them on Facebook if that's who your customers are. But we see the biggest chunk of people, 59% of 18 to 29 year olds on Instagram. So we could have said, well, if my goal is to reach young people, Instagram's the way to go. But didn't Facebook have even more? So it depends who we're trying to reach and when. So now let's go to today. And today, in this order, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat are the three most popular for the younger people. And 95% of teens have access to a phone and 45% say they're online almost constantly. And if any of you are parents, you know this. <laughs> you see them, they won't put down their phones. So Facebook today is in fourth position for the younger people. For some clients, younger people may be the goal. Like if you're a chiropractor, you're not looking for teens and 20 year olds, but um, a lot of sodas, when you see Mountain Dew, Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, they're not trying to convince me that I should change over to this other soda. They're trying to convince young people because once you get young people to like your soft drink, they're not likely to switch. Coffee's another one that looks for young people. We decide what coffee we like when we're from 18 to 22 years old, when we're going to college and we're drinking coffee to study. Once we like that brand, it's hard to get us to switch. So the coffee makers, they also want the young people. You get a customer for life. So now here's something we did just for fun. There, there I am with this sign. We'll program websites for food. This guy's an actor and we put financial news network or something. We made it look like it's a, a regular news station. And um, he's interviewing me about tough times in the economy and how I'm, how I'm uh, finding new customers in a unique way. So then I go chasing after this car. And we've got an actress in the car. I chase down the car, I spray the windshield, I wipe it off and I go, you need a website for your business, ma'am? And she beeps the horn and drives off. We got 37,000 views on YouTube with that. So I'm not paying to put it on YouTube, you put it on YouTube for free, but people found it. And if you search for a creative, funny ad agency, you'll find it right up at the top. So a guy in Orlando found it and he told me he wanted to spend 200,000. So I thought, well, that's pretty good. I'm glad I made a fool of myself with that funny video. So uh, I went to see him and I met with my media buyer and we put together a, a schedule for the 200,000. But you know, in South Florida, I thought things are different. In South Florida, a car dealership could spend 200,000 a month. This guy wants to spend 200. So I go there anyway, show him the schedule. He looks at it and he says, oh, I see what you did. You divided the 200,000 by 12. No, I meant per month, per store. I've got two stores. I said, oh, <laughs> no problem. So you wanted to spend 400,000 a month on your advertising. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. I said, okay, fine. We'll go back, we'll put together a new schedule, come back in a few days. So I got that because I sprayed someone's windshield in this funny video and he found me because he was looking for someone who does funny advertising. We made this um, newspaper ad for him. He wanted that woman screaming there because all the other ads are just gonna be a car and that's it, and maybe a, a good interest rate. So he liked ads that were funny. So how often should you be posting something? So I checked and I found major brands, those companies where we recognize their name, they're posting on average one and a half times a day in Instagram. But there's also research that shows that there's no drop off in engagement. People still like your things that you post on Instagram and follow you, even if you post more. And Constant Contact says something very different about Facebook. They say minimum three times a week, but keep it to a limit of 10 times a week. So if I'm posting Monday through Friday, that's two times a day. And you know how Facebook works. If you were following my company on Facebook and I'm posting 10 times a day, you're gonna stop following me because you're gonna see all this stuff I'm promoting about how awesome my company is. But Instagram doesn't work that way and Twitter doesn't work that way. So on Twitter, they're saying you could even post 20 times a day if you can keep up to it. 
because of the way the Twitter feed works, very different than the Instagram and Facebook. So the things we like to post are going to be useful information, but also very important is funny information. Well, very important if you agree with my goal that you want to use social media to get your website to rank better. Then I'll put funny things in there. So if I say ad excellence is the most awesome ad agency in South Florida, who cares? But if I tell a joke and people click and like it or share it or retweet it, more social signals for me. Google detects that. I'm going to rank better. So I'll throw in a lot of things that are just silly sometimes, and that works. And it works for my clients, too. You can also put things that you think your followers would care about. And then I put um, onion there to remind me about an onion story. So you know when they take the onion, they cut it this way, and then they cut it that way. They put it in batter, deep fry it. Lots of restaurants do it. They'll call it the onion blossom, the blooming onion, the whatever. So one restaurant told me that they're giving that away on social media to their followers. And I said, well, on your menu, that's $8.99. And he goes, yeah, and with the labor, my cost isn't even a dollar, so I'll give away onions all day long. Plus, no one's going to come in, sit down on a table, eat an onion, and leave. They're going to order a dinner, probably drinks, and they're probably coming with a friend or friends. So it may be a group of four or eight people, and they're going to order drinks. And now because they got the free appetizer, the blooming onion, they feel like, hey, I could splurge a little and buy dessert. So it works really well for them to give away the free appetizer. In Miami, there's a company called Misha's Cupcakes. Years ago, we made their um, website. And um, they were already doing social media. I didn't handle any of that for them. But they gave me this great idea. I wish I could take credit. They had the word of the day. And so the word of the day might be coconut. And if you knew the word of the day, which they would tweet out on Twitter, and you came in and said, word of the day, coconut, they'd give you a free coconut cupcake. And I said, OK, this isn't like the restaurant. I could actually walk in grab my cupcake for free, and leave. How can you do this? And it has to do with a thing called the law of reciprocity. So it works like this. If I do something nice for you, you feel a little obligated. You want to do something nice back for me. So that morning, you were planning on buying two dozen donuts to bring back to the office, and now you got the word of the day. So you go, well, instead of donuts, I'll go to Misha's Cupcakes, pick up my free cupcake, and while I'm eating it, I'll say, give me three of that one, give me three of those, and you end up with two dozen. So they're happy to give away a cupca uh, cupcake. It's never a problem. So in different businesses, something like that could work out pretty well also. So what should you be posting and how? Over there on the left, you see pictures, pictures, pictures. Pictures are good, especially if your prices are good. You can include the price. So this is an actual thing I posted on Twitter, I believe, and it was, uh, for example, that $95 retractable banner stand. Most people sell them for $250, so why wouldn't I want to show the price? And then the hashtags that I'm using, uh, on the left you can see I used banner stands, trade show displays, and marketing. There's probably a few others I could have thought of, but I usually put at least three. I know some people put 10, 20 hashtags. You can. That's what makes them searchable. And it's good to be funny. This is in Google Plus, it's what we're doing for that jewelry store client. So I put a question here. When is the perfect time to give your wife a piece of jewelry and tell her you love her? Answer, before someone else does. So people like it. They'll like it, they'll share it, they'll retweet it. So it's good to do things like that. Be funny with the things you post. You can't just say, we're the most awesome jewelry store in all of Miami. You can't say that every day. You've got to do something different. Here's something we did for a dentist. And this dentist was in Bonita Springs, Florida. That's where her office was. She moves to Fort Lauderdale, doesn't know anyone, and no one knows her. So she got a website from someone else, and you couldn't find her even if you searched for her by name. So we used social media to make her website rank better, and we created a movie theater ad. She was in a shopping center at uh, Cypress Creek Road, just west of I-95. There's a shopping center with a movie theater. She's in there. So we said, well, if people will drive to this movie theater, they'll drive to this dentist. So we'll put a commercial in there. And how many of you really look forward to going to the dentist? Oh, everyone, right? You like that towel around your neck and then they hurt you with sharp instruments? No one likes it. So we wanted to show our dentist is fun, a fun, happy person that you might say, hey, I'm going to go see her. So I'll run this one. It's only 15.
So after that ran in the theater, only about six months, she told me that she would go to restaurants and people go, you're that dentist, I saw you in the movie theater. So she's becoming famous in her own neighborhood. So it was really good at, at that. But the other thing we did is we put it in YouTube and now it's been viewed thousands of times. So it's a really good thing to do, to make funny videos and, oops, goodbye. So this one, I'm not gonna show you the commercial, I'll just tell you about it. We did this for a pest control company. We put these two guys in the storage shed at the owner's home and made it look like it's some rinky-dink pest control company. So the guy answers the phone, he goes, hello, pest control, you want a free estimate over the phone and you don't want a contract and you want us there today? And they both start laughing, like that's the most ridiculous thing they've ever heard. Then we switch scenes and you see my client, nice uniform, standing in front of his nice clean truck. And so we're showing, you don't want just anyone coming into your house, you want a professional being there. So uh, that ran on TV a short time, then put it on YouTube. It gets viewed thousands of times. He gets customers from it to this day. And we did that probably 10 years ago. Then here's the one that I showed you before. We'll program websites for food. So down here in the description, the first thing I always put is a link to the website. And what I put here is a, a link to the specific page of the website where you can see this video. So I embedded the YouTube video in my website, or you could see it on YouTube, either way. So, and you see right there, 37,000 views. And it's not all my mom. A lot, <laughs> many people have seen it and watched it, and some even liked it. So hashtags are a way that you can search for things, at least three or more. Your company name could be the hashtag, but if your company name isn't that famous, who's searching for your company name? So if I'm posting something about my company, probably hashtag marketing, hashtag advertising would be used, and then whatever else. So if it was about web design, I'd also include hashtag web design. If it was about trade show displays, I'd also include hashtag trade show displays. Question for me. Yes. Or, or now. Hashtag works on Facebook and Twitter and Facebook owns Instagram, so it works there too. It works on Google Plus. It doesn't work in LinkedIn, but we can do other things there, which I'll get to. Yes? What are, like, how many machines are there? Like, is there a limit to the number? There's no, no number, but I, I try and keep it relevant. I usually like three, but that, that's not a rule. And I've seen many people use a lot more. I've seen people put 20. But I try and keep it relevant because if you searched for something and found my post and you go, that wasn't what I wanted at all, that didn't help me and it didn't help you. So I really do try and keep it relevant. Here you can see I'm posting a thing about some trade show displays. So I used hashtag affordable displays, hashtag trade show displays, hashtag banners. I also have a tent there. Maybe I could have put hashtag event tents or something like that. But I just went with three, and you can see it up at the top where you search for it and it brings up these things. So that's why we have to use a hashtag. If we don't use a hashtag, it's there and then it's gone and no one will find it again. Yes? Would you use the same exact approach to hashtag on different platforms or would you stick with SEO? I, I won't post the same thing on different platforms, but my method of using a hashtag, yeah, the same. Now in Twitter, Everyone know how many characters you can put in Twitter? It, it used to be, and then just last year, it went to 240. So you see things change all the time. So when it was half that many, I didn't have room for very many hashtags in Twitter. Now we've got room for more. So if I could think of more hashtags relevant to that, I would do it. Anyone know who Michael Avenatti is? You see him on the news a lot. Right, you know who he is. So would you agree he's kind of a tough guy? You don't want to be his enemy. You don't want him suing you in court because you're gonna have trouble. So he uses this hashtag Basta. So I searched for Basta and I discover no one else is using it. And then I saw this um, tweet over here, 54K, 54,000 people like that, 10,000 retweeted it and 2,000 people made a comment. And I looked again, hashtag Boston, no one else is using it. So I thought, what if I posted something, hashtag Boston? Is Michael Avenatti gonna sue me? Can he? Well, Basta is just a word, and it's a word in Italian that means enough already. So he's ending every post with enough already, but in Italian. You cannot own a word. 
You cannot trademark the word. You cannot have the exclusive right to that word. And so if you were to go to Twitter now uh, and search for Basta, you're going to see something I just posted. <laughs> eh, I'm not going to hear from Michael Avenatti. You, you can't own a word. So a company like Kleenex, Xerox, Pepsi, they invented those words. So I can't make a cola drink and say, we've got Pepsi too. No, I don't. I've got a cola drink. Pepsi is a word they made up just so they can be the only ones with Pepsi. And if I had a facial tissue company, I can't say, we make Kleenex too. No, we don't. We make facial tissue. But Basta, it's a word. You can't trademark that. So yes, I can use Basta. So could you. So you don't want to jump on things that are really bad, like um, the shooting in Parkland, MSD strong. Don't go MSD strong uh, unless you're talking specifically about that. But jump on other hashtags that are trending. If you can find a way to make it work, why not? So here's um, something in LinkedIn. OK, this is a good thing for all of you to do and for your clients recommend it. So first of all, everyone knows that you wrote your own profile on LinkedIn, right? You didn't hire a writer. We all know that. So why do we do it in the third person? Rick Goldman began making websites in 1995. Don't do that. Talk in the first person. So I, I wrote, I look forward to hearing from you. Now the other thing is, LinkedIn makes it almost impossible for you to reach that person unless you're connected. And if you're not connected, how do you reach them? So right there, I put my phone number. Please feel free to call me at, and there's my phone number, or email me at, and there's my email address. Then I discovered long ago, people are more likely to buy whatever I'm selling if they think I'm nice, if they think I'm funny, if they think I'm personable. So I wrote a little something funny in there. I said, I began making websites in 1995, and I'm starting to get good at it. And then I tell them who my customers are, because they might See, I've done work for the Miami Herald and for FIU, but if I put that, then most people are not up on that level. So I would lose most of them. They go, ooh, they're probably too expensive for me doing work for the Miami Herald. So I don't want to say that. So I said right there, our clients are lawyers, medical doctors, dentists, manufacturers, retails, and many more. So I want to let people know, yeah, any one of you could be my customer. So if I said the Miami Herald and FIU, most people would say, oh, that's the wrong agency, and they'd leave and go somewhere else. Here's another fun thing you can do with LinkedIn. I like this one a lot. You click up there where it says me, and then you can add a company. So I added my company, Advertising Excellence Inc., but then I realized LinkedIn doesn't check to see if the company exists at all, so I can make one up. So I made up one called Miami Website Designers. Now, I've got a website about Miami Website Design. And so I link to that website there on that company page for Miami Website Designers. Um, sometimes that'll show up in search results. So I might as well put it there. Also, if someone found me, maybe they'll look at my company. So it can be helpful in a couple of ways. And if we're doing anything online where we're, especially if we're paying, if we're paying a fee to post things, we want to check and see what works better. So Post A, free shipping, use coupon code SHIP. Post B, 10% discount, use coupon, co coupon code 10. Which one will work better? Well, if the price of the item, let's say, was $75, maybe shipping is around $750, and 10% would be $750. So then we're really seeing what do the customers prefer, free shipping or 10% or off. But if I'm selling jewelry and it's $500, 10% off is $50. I know the shipping's a lot less than that. So everyone would accept the 10% off. So if the price is going to be around what you believe your customers might think the shipping cost will be, try it. See which one they like better. Now, post A, one of my favorites here, we put the company logo. Post B has the person's photo. We did this for a pediatric dentist, and it wasn't really a test. We knew the photo, two cute twin girls, everyone's going to click on that to see the pediatric dentist. And that's what happened. Hardly anyone would ever click on their logo. So why did I do that on purpose? Well, it's pay-per-click. So we paid for the people who clicked on the cute picture of the two girls, the twins, because those were people right now looking for a pediatric dentist. And for everyone else, thousands and thousands of times, they saw my client's logo without us paying. So that worked out pretty good. Run their logo for free on a pay-per-click program, but the other ad is to get the clicks with the cute kids. Um, another one, this is really my favorite one, because these two sound like they're the same. So post a, buy any $50 item, get one free. So what I'm saying is they're $25, right? 
But then in post B, I say, buy a $50 item for $25. Same thing, right? It's like identical, except it's totally different. If you buy on post A, you just spent $50. If you buy on post B, you just spent $25. I'd rather sell $50 worth of stuff. So I prefer post A, but I could test and see which one works better. And if post A works not even better, but just as good as post B, I'll take all the money from post B and put it into post A. Why not? I'm doubling my money when I run post A. Even a little thing like the buy button, you could have the exact same ad, but just the buy button changes color. Do people prefer the red button or the blue button or the green button? We don't know. We can try it. And some people might click more if it's a green button, while others will click more if it's a red button. So maybe it's good to do both, but it's good to test. So how do we get people to pay attention? So when we make a TV commercial, we have this five-second rule. We've got to get their attention in the first five seconds or we've lost them. They're off to see what's in the refrigerator or use the restroom. So five seconds, we've got to have their attention. When you're at the grocery store in the checkout, look at the tabloids with those ridiculous headlines. They made you look. You might have picked it up and maybe you buy one. So we use headlines like top social media marketing tips. And here you are. Uh, that was a good one. So you could take out social media marketing and put in top tips on chiropractic care, top tips on finding the right pediatric dentist. It could be anything. Five secrets about lawyers. It could be whatever you want. Amazing new ways to anything. The breakthrough you've been waiting for, 10 reasons why whatever business you're promoting or the shocking truth about pediatric dentists. <gasps> So if I'm a mom, I, I definitely want to know the shocking truth about pediatric dentists. But if I just said Fort Lauderdale pediatric dentist as my headline, I'm not going to get as many people to click on it. So if I can get them to click with the shocking truth about pediatric dentists, then they'll read my story that maybe all pediatric dentists graduated, but what'd they do after that? Some went for extra training. So I could turn that into a story. Also, you want to be sure to respond uh, Facebook, for example, will say this, um, this um, business typically responds within, and you don't want it to say weeks or days, <laughs> you want it to say minutes. <clears throat> also, the boost post, you'll see that when you post something in Facebook, they'll try and encourage you to boost it. So they'll say, for $5, you could reach 5,000 people in your area. But you don't want to reach 5,000 people in your area. I want to reach 5,000 people who might want a retractable banner stand, right? but the average public doesn't need that. So I don't use the boost post, I'll go to the ad manager and pick who I want. We can spy on our competition in any business. We can see what are they doing, what are they posting, <clears throat> who follows them, and what works best. So if we see a competitor who typically gets 10 likes or shares or retweets, and then they got this one that got 150, I can do it, I can just put my logo in and do the exact same thing. Maybe it was a contest. I can do it. The patent office won't issue a patent on ideas. I can steal their idea. No one owns an idea. So they can be doing something. I think, hey, they got a lot of traffic from that. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Why not? No one owns it. So why should anyone follow you? We've got to give them a reason to follow you. Behind the scenes video of how we make our whatever, could be cupcakes, could be anything, could be how we do back adjustments in our chiropractic office. You might want to see that before you go see the chiropractor. The word of the day gets you a free whatever. Live customer service on Twitter. I've only seen big companies do that. So you've got to have someone sitting there on Twitter all the time to respond or people will get mad. Sign up for our, <coughs> sign up for our newsletter. I see that on a lot of websites. I'm sure you've seen it too. Why would I sign up for your newsletter? So you can send me spam? No, thank you. What if we said there's exclusive discounts for our followers? Well, if I'm on your website, I must like the stuff you sell. So why wouldn't I want exclusive discounts? But sign up your newsletter? Uh-uh, not signing up for your newsletter. Internet only, advertise specials. Enter your email address here. Okay, but sign up for your newsletter? Never. So it's the same thing. They're going to enter their email address in that box. It's just the way we word it that makes all the difference. But sign up for your, our newsletter? No, that's terrible. No one wants to do that. They're going to get spam. So then we can target our customers 
And this is the ad manager from Facebook, and they ask you, so are you looking for engagement or app installs or video views or what are you looking for? And they guide you through the process to make it easier. And then you can pick things like the location, age of people, male or female. Um, you can even pick interests that people have. So in, in this example, let's say I picked pilot. And I might pick pilot because of what we call birds of a feather. So birds of a feather flock together. We know that pilots also like sailboats. So if I'm selling sailboats, I might target pilots. Because if I target people who said they like boats, well, now I'm competing with everyone else who's targeting the people who like boats. So if I'm selling boats, I might target pilots. Pilots, think about what they do. They're sitting there on the airplane. They're controlling it. They like to be in control. The sailboat's the same thing. That pilot is now controlling a sailboat. The curved surface of a wing is the same as the curved surface of a sail, and they work the same. As air flows over the curved surface of a wing, low pressure area is created. It creates lift. The airplane goes up. On a sail, it moves the boat in the direction of that curve. Pilots understand that. They like it. So we can target people based on birds of a feather. And you see this in other things, too. For example, uh, if you go to Broward Center of Performing Arts and you're watching a play or the opera, we know certain things about people who have the money to buy those $200 tickets. We know they probably drive an expensive car. So in the playbill, we're going to advertise Lexus. We're not going to advertise Kia. So it's birds of a feather. We're looking at what do these people have in common? What else do they like? And that's where we'll run our ads, not just at a car show. So if you go to my website, I've got more than one website, but this one's social-media-marketing.us.com. If you go there, scroll down on the homepage, you'll see free uh, social media marketing management. And what you'll get for free is this tool where you can enter the thing you want to post on social media. And then over here, you can decide if it's going in Facebook or LinkedIn on your personal page or your business page and, or Twitter or whatever. And then the thing you don't want to do is don't select all because then you get the same post everywhere. Why would every, every, anyone follow you on the other social sites if you're posting the same thing everywhere? The other problem is Google detects that as duplication, so you're wasting your time. So using this, you could write one message for Facebook, then write, write one for your personal LinkedIn, one for your business LinkedIn, all of them different, and you schedule them. So on Monday, you could sit down and write all your posts for the week, and then you get a screen like this. So it shows at 11.20, we've got this going out on LinkedIn, and this going out on Twitter at 11.25, and that going into Google+, that's going into Facebook, and here's the next day. So I can sit down on Monday, schedule all my postings for a week, or for a month if I wanted to, and then forget about them, and they're going to take care of themselves. So if you go to that website address, you'll be able to use that for free as much as you want. It does some interesting things, like I just started back in May, where you see the date there, I just started posting for this website that's all about affordable trade show displays. So it shows me which one was my most successful content. And it was this one, where the title, the title says, is this even legal? So people want to know, is what legal? So they click on it and they look. So I got 26 clicks on a brand new website that no one's following because people want to know, is what legal? Let me see. And so that was my most successful content. So then there's a button here, reschedule it. So I can use it again because it was the most successful thing. Why not reschedule it? So most companies charge $99 a month to let you use a tool like that. I'm giving it to you for free. Am I Santa Claus? No. Coca-Cola invented Santa in 1932. OK, not really. But before 1932, Santa could be wearing green or red or gray or even animal skins. Santa could have been skinny or big. It didn't matter. Santa could be a mean guy who punished children. There was no standard for Santa. In 1932, Coca-Cola company hired an artist and said, we want a happy Santa. We want him big because we're coming out of the depression. It's a sign of prosperity. He's eating well. And be sure you dress him in the colors of our logo. And now, wherever Christmas is celebrated all around the world, it's the Coca-Cola 1932 Santa that's on all the cards in the shopping malls with the Coca-Cola colors. But I digress. So why am I giving this to you free? Am I Santa? No. We talked about this. It's the um, 
idea that if I do something nice for you, maybe you'll do something nice for me. Maybe you'll say, hey, let's have Rick make that viral video for us or have Rick make that um, TV commercial for us. But use the tool all you want for free. It's yours. I hope you have fun with it. Are there any other questions?